In this video, we're gonna be taking a standard breakfast stout, which is a coffee stout, and adding a whole bunch of extra stuff to it to make it even more complex and interesting. If you like that, stick around and see what happens next. So if it's your first time here, I just wanna say thank you for checking out the channel. Here on my channel, I'll typically either do one of two things, a grain glass video like the one you're watching right now, where I take a beer all the way from start to finish in the same video, or I will do a shorter, more informative video on various homebrewing topics. If you like either of those things, please go ahead, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button as well, so YouTube gets to recommend more stuff like this to you in the future. I've taken some time off the channel for the last few weeks, but I kept brewing, uh, and this is one of those beers that I brewed. So I filmed the brew day and everything, I just haven't filmed the intro and the fermentation section and all that good green screen stuff that we're doing right now. So please bear with me for that. So what we're doing today is a maple breakfast stout, which is, uh, well, it's a big deviation from the classic beer styles and like the German lagers that I've been doing over the last half of last year. Um, but it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's, it's a, basically what we're doing is taking a breakfast stout, which is a coffee stout, and adding a whole bunch of extra layers of flavor onto it. Obviously we're already adding coffee to the beer, but we're also adding maple syrup, cacao nibs, and vanilla to this whole thing. So we're gonna be using all 100% natural ingredients. We're not gonna be using any extracts or any flavorings. Uh, Everything is going to be from the actual source. The inspiration for this beer actually was uh, the Maple Breakfast Stout from 14th Star Brewing Company. So check that beer out if you've never had it. It's a great, great beer. I live in New England and I'm surrounded by maple syrup, so I've been wanting to brew with this ingredient for a long time. Um, the problem is it's really difficult to actually brew with and get the flavor to come through because despite being a very, very strongly flavored sugar, uh, maple syrup is almost entirely fermentable. And what that means is all of that flavor that you get when you taste maple syrup is pretty much gone and completely fermented out by the yeast if you just add it to the beer. Now there is one workaround for this. So if you have a kegging setup and you add maple syrup to the keg uh, after the fermentation has completed, then there's a good chance you're gonna have that maple flavor stick around. But if you still have active yeast in that beer, it can ferment that out over time and you can end up losing that flavor over time. If you bottle, um, there's also the option of adding maple syrup at bottling uh, to actually prime your bottles with maple syrup instead of priming sugar. Now, there's a bit of a caveat on that though, just make sure you're actually adding the proper amount of maple syrup in your bottling so you don't get bottle bombs. Obviously that's a bad time, we don't wanna have that happen. At the end of the day, maple syrup does seem to kind of just be a very expensive version of corn sugar when you add it to your brew. Although a lot of people who brew regularly with maple syrup tend to swear by it as having a subtle flavor impact no matter where you add it during the brewing process. Um, another option is if you don't want to use maple syrup but you wanna get that maple flavor, try using fenugreek. That is a spice that is used to provide the maple flavoring to uh, kind of the really cheap, inexpensive expensive plastic bottle syrups like Aunt Jemima's uh, and that sort of thing. Um, that's not real maple flavor. It is close and it is a non-fermentable flavor, so you will get it coming through in your final beer if you use fenugreek. However, um, I'm gonna try and see what happens if I use the regular thing. While doing the research for this recipe, I found a whole bunch of different great options for maple stouts, really. Um, so this is kind of a amalgamation of what I think is the best parts of most of them. However, one recipe I saw stood out, it had a very characteristic ingredient that people said was amazing and is something I also have yet to try and that is toasting oats and adding those into your uh, mash. Now you can get toasted oats, uh, but it's also very easy just to make them yourself. So to make toasted oats is actually really simple. All you have to do is get your regular flaked oats or Quaker rolled oats or whatever you want to use for your flaked oats and spread them out on a baking sheet on some tin foil or some parchment paper or something like that. Throw them in your oven for 15 minutes at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. And so this is going to do a couple things for you. It's going to create this really nice kind of oatmeal cookie flavor. Uh, and aroma, which is going to carry through to the final beer, and it's also going to darken the oats a little bit and give you a little bit of color. What you're gonna notice in my recipe is that I'm not adding any sort of middle toasted kind of malts like Munich malt or Vienna malt. It's just the toasted oats. So I am, I am basically moving from base malt to toasted oats to roasted malts in this recipe. And based on the way that the beer is tasting in the fermenter right now, uh, I can tell you this actually worked really well. All in all, this beer is going to have a lot of steps. It's gonna be relatively complicated uh, and it's gonna have a lot of precise timelines and additions both during the brew day and also during the uh, fermentation. So I wouldn't really characterize this as an easy beer, 
But that being said, it is definitely going to be a fun beer. Really quickly, I want to give a big shout out to Northern Brewer for providing me the ingredients for this batch of beer. If you haven't already heard, Northern Brewer is no longer owned by AB InBev, and uh, they're a great place to go to check out uh, new equipment or any ingredients you need for your next batch of beer. So don't be afraid to hit them up using either the link in the description box or just going over to northernbrewer.com. So for the recipe on this beer, we're starting out with 13 pounds of Maris Otter uh, as a base malt, uh, really nice, delicious, toasty, biscuity kind of uh, English malt that's going to really give a good base for the stout. Um, on top of that, we're adding a pound and a half of regular untoasted flaked oats. However, on top of that, we're adding half a pound of toasted flaked oats, and that's gonna be toasted in the oven um, in the using the process that I just described, 15 minutes at 300 degrees. Then on top of that, we're adding half a pound of English coffee malt. We're adding a third of a pound of Carafa 3, three quarters of a pound of chocolate malt, and a third of a pound of roasted barley. Now that's gonna be all of our barley-based fermentables, but later on in the process, I'll be adding 16 fluid ounces of maple syrup during high Krausen. There's a good chance that the entirety of the maple flavor blows off after that fermentation. What I'm trying to do here is add the maple syrup basically right as fermentation is beginning to go into its secondary stage. Basically the primary stage of fermentation, you get so much off gas uh, and so much uh, CO2 being vented out of the fermenter that it tends to carry away a lot of the aromatics of a beer. Uh, if you're adding ingredients to flavor the beer or add aromatics before the high Krausen stage, a lot of that's gonna blow off during fermentation due to the intensity of the fermentation. So I'm adding the maple syrup kind of as fermentation begins to scale down a little bit, but before it gets into the full secondary stage. And uh, we'll see what happens. It might blow it all off, it might not, we'll see. So for hops in this beer, we're just doing a 60 minute edition of Northern Brewer. Um, and then we're gonna do a five minute edition of Willamette, which is a, a great hop to put in stouts. For our yeast, I'm actually using a second generation of Y Yeast 1084 Irish Ale, uh, which is the same strain as Imperial Darkness. This is a really, really good stout strain. Uh, I saved a mason jar of this yeast off of my Irish Red Ale that I brewed. Um, almost a year ago, and I made a big old starter of it. It came right back to life, um, so I'm happy to use it again. I'm pretty sure that it's going to rip through fermentation, uh, so that should be fun. For the water in this one, we're targeting a water profile that's going to bring out the malty characteristics of the beer a bit more, uh, so a higher ratio of chloride to sulfates. Uh, so that water profile looks like 86 parts per million of calcium, seven parts per million of magnesium, 26 parts per million of sodium, 81 parts per million of sulfate, 151 parts per million of chloride, and zero parts per million of bicarbonate. But many of you guys are probably asking me why zero parts per million of bicarbonate when I'm brewing a stout. Well, I'm actually adding all of those roasted grains in the last 15 minutes of the mash to cut down on that water chemistry impact that they have. They tend to acidify the mash, and if you don't correct for that with a high bicarbonate level, um, you can have a lower than targeted mash pH, which can have a detrimental effect on the flavor of your beer, but you could also just add them during the end of the mash after most of that conversion has happened, um, and you can get the same color out of it with uh, minimal flavor impact. So that's actually what I'm gonna be doing here today. The water profile I gave you is kind of oriented more towards an amber malty beer instead of a dark malty beer. That's a lesson I learned when I made my Schwartz beer, uh, which uh, kind of had a little bit of a water chemistry issue in it because I didn't really account for the fact that I was adding those roasted grains uh, during the last 15 minutes. So hopefully that doesn't quite happen the same way this time, and uh, I'm interested to see what happens. So in order to get that water profile, I'm adding three grams of gypsum, two grams of epsom, two grams of sodium chloride, and seven grams of calcium chloride. Uh, we're gonna mash this at 154 for 60 minutes. That's a nice high mash temperature to get us a good amount of residual sweetness. We want that sweetness in there to back up all of these extra flavorings we're adding. Um, it is almost a pastry stout, basically, that we're trying to make here, so it should be pretty sweet. We're shooting for a final gravity somewhere around 1020. And then lastly, we're adding a whole bunch of spices and flavorings. So uh, first of all, the 16 fluid ounces of maple syrup, like I mentioned, that's going in uh, at High Krausen. So we're also adding a tincture I'm gonna make out of two vanilla beans. 
The tincture is made on brew day and then added seven days later uh, in its entirety to the fermenter. And it'll probably sit in the fermenter for about seven days as well. This is going, the vanilla beans are gonna add a whole nice middle layer that's gonna make a really nice smooth sweetness, um, especially in conjunction with the maple syrup, I think, uh, to really bring out a new layer uh, of interesting sweetness and complexity in the beer. Uh, on top of that, we're adding four ounces of cacao nibs uh, at seven days as well. So this is going to give you a little bit of that kind of dark, bitter chocolate character, uh, which will come across in the final beer in a nice way, I think. And then lastly, we're going to add four ounces of dark roast coffee beans, not ground, not brewed, just the straight beans into the secondary. We're going to let those steep in the beer for four days prior to packaging. Um, coffee beans are a very flavorful ingredient, and if you let them sit on the beer for too long, it will overpower it and it can cause it to taste kind of like weird, greeny. Uh, it gives it a kind of a weird vegetal bean flavor if you add it for too long. But if you take it and you add it for a shorter period of time, it will really come across with that nice, smooth coffee flavor, and that's what we want. We don't want it to be too roasty, we don't want it to be too, uh, too bitter, too astringent. Um, just want to bring across a nice note of coffee on top of the whole thing. Let's go ahead and cut over to the brew day footage. Before I did anything on brew day, I took the half pound of flaked oats that I'd set aside for toasting. I spread them across the baking sheet in as thin of a layer as possible and toasted them in the oven for about 10 minutes at 300 degrees Fahrenheit. This imparted a really nice golden color on the oats and uh, made the entire kitchen smell like I was baking delicious cookies. I let these cool off uh, for a long time before adding them into the grist later on during the brew day. So after doing this, I took seven gallons of distilled water and added it to the Claw Hammer Supply 120 volt system and started to heat it up to mash temperature, reserving one gallon for sparging later on. Uh, because of the large amount of grain being used in this brew, I couldn't really fit it all into eight gallons of straight up water at the beginning of the mash. As it was heating out, I measured out all of my water salts and I added those to the strike water, and then I also milled out all of my grain, with the exception of the roasted malts, saving those for later. Once the water reached my mash in temperature, I mashed in with the grain bill, being sure to break up any clumps I had in the mash, and then I started recirculating. I let the mash sit at 154 degrees uh, for 60 minutes. But 10 minutes in, I took a pH reading and I saw an on-target pH of 5.3. So once the mash had sat for a full 45 minutes, then I crushed up the roasted malts and the dark malts and I added those into the main mash on top of everything else. After letting that sit for another 15 minutes, I raised up to the mash out temperature of 170 Fahrenheit and I let it sit for another 15 minutes. Uh, pulling the grain basket out after that was finished and poured the last gallon of hot sparge water over everything. I let the grain basket drain for 15 more minutes and then I fired up the controller to 100% power and I pulled a sample of work for the pre-boil gravity reading and saw a measurement of 17.2 bricks or 1069 which was actually one point higher than the target pre-boil gravity. Once I reached my boil, I added my one ounce of Northern Brewer to bitter. 45 minutes later, I added a Whirlflock tablet and some yeast nutrient. 10 minutes after that, I added my five minute hop addition, which was one ounce of Willamette. I let the boil continue for another five minutes, and then I killed the boil by starting to recirculate boiling wort through my chiller and pump and tubing. And this is just my preferred way to ensure it's all sanitized prior to chilling. After being sure the inside of everything was all sterilized, I began to chill everything down to 70 degrees Fahrenheit. I took an OG sample and I recorded an original gravity of 19 bricks, uh, which is about 1077, and that was only one point lower than my target OG. So then I aerated with pure oxygen for about a minute. pitch my yeast and left it to ferment.
Immediately after this, I started preparing the vanilla bean tincture. So I filled up a spice bottle with about two fluid ounces of vodka, and then I split two vanilla beans lengthwise and chopped them up to fit in the bottle a bit better. I shook it all up and let the tincture sit and extract flavor for about a week. I would usually shake it up at least once a day uh, to keep everything in suspension. And then when it was time, I would just add that liquid into the fermenter directly uh, to impart that vanilla flavor we wanted. So the fermentation on this beer is gonna have a little bit extra complexity. Um, it is a strong beer, so we're gonna wanna make sure that we take good care of our fermentation to avoid off flavors. First of all, I'm gonna ferment this nice and low. So we are using Irish ale yeast, which likes to ferment in the mid 60s. Now, if you go higher than that, you will start to bring out berry flavors, which can be beneficial if you want to incorporate that into the type of beer that you're brewing. I personally don't want that. I want it to be more clean and just have a nice residual maltiness. So I'm gonna keep it around 65 degrees for pretty much the entire fermentation. However, towards the end, we're gonna ramp up to 68 and probably hold it at 68 for a couple days, uh, just to make sure that everything gets finished off and that the fermentation cleans up nicely. There's also the option of adding in a neutral kvike yeast, like something like Lutra or maybe Hornendal. The yeast characteristic of those is gonna be very boring or it'll be a little bit funky, uh, depending on what temperature you ferment them at. Colder is probably better in this case. Um, by cold for kvike, I mean like 75. Um, <laughs> but if you ferment it hot and fast at like 100 degrees, you're probably gonna get a little bit fruity character, a little bit of like a weird mushroomy thing that I always get from Hornendal, but um, it's gonna be interesting. That is an option though still for those of you who have very hot climates. A dry yeast option that I would recommend is Safale SO4, the English ale strain. Um, this is a good, good malty beer option for this uh, particular beer, and it'll ferment out really nice and really fast uh, if you take care of it. Another good option would be classic London Ale strain, something like the London Ale 1318, or uh, if you want a little bit more roundness, maybe something like the uh, ESB strain. All of those will get you where you need to be for this beer. Yeast isn't really a big player in the flavor of this beer. Whatever it happens though, you want it to be clean, you want it to have a little residual maltiness, uh, and you don't want it to attenuate too much because then you'll start to lose those extra flavors that we're adding in and spending a lot of money trying to put together. Um, so you wanna have a decent amount of sweetness left there at the end uh, to back all of that up. And like I said, this is a strong beer. It's being fermented by a pretty standard Irish yeast. It's a relatively fast fermenter, but it's going to need some time to really clean up a lot of the byproducts of the yeast, um, especially diacetyl. Yeast strains from England, Ireland, and Scotland are kind of notorious for producing a lot of diacetyl. So just make sure that you're adding a little bit of extra temperature at the end of your fermentation to clean that up um, and giving it enough time. Don't rush this. This kind of stout should actually not require a very long aging period because there's not gonna be a significant amount of roasty flavor in it. But it's still worth saying, take care of this fermentation, give it enough time to mellow things out and uh, and clean up its byproducts. So bottom line is you really wanna leave it in the fermenter for probably about two to three weeks. Um, and then if you're kegging this and it tastes good, go ahead, put it on gas and serve it. It shouldn't take that long to, uh, to mature out. Um, but if it doesn't quite taste where you want it to, leave it at room temperature in the keg for a little bit longer uh, to just finish up that aging period. Because it is so sweet, it doesn't require too much time uh, after fermentation to really become uh, drinkable, which is nice. So in a nutshell, what I'll be doing is fermenting this one at 65 degrees Fahrenheit for most of its primary fermentation, probably for about two weeks. Then I'll raise up to 68 degrees Fahrenheit uh, and let it sit there at 68 probably for another four to seven days. Um, and then at that point, transfer it to the keg. If it tastes good and it's drinkable, we'll go ahead and serve it right away. Otherwise, if it needs to sit around and mature out for a bit, then we'll do that as well. Uh, we'll be adding our maple syrup at high Krausen, so that's about three days into fermentation, and then we'll be adding our cacao nibs and our uh, vanilla bean tincture at seven days, and then we'll be adding our coffee beans four days prior to packaging. And then one more thing, make sure you take those out of the beer uh, before you package it. Now at that point in time, if the beer doesn't taste anything like maple and it doesn't have the maple character that you want in it, go ahead and dose that thing with a little bit extra more maple syrup. Or if you want to, use the fenugreek, use some maple extract in the keg, whatever you feel is appropriate um, to get you that level of maple character. Now, uh, different people have different levels of preference for maple syrup. Uh, so it's a very strong flavor. It's a very sweet flavor, um, especially in beer. So uh, make those choices carefully um, and gradually if you're dosing a keg uh, to get the flavor that you want. 
I am very excited to see how this beer turns out. So I'll catch you guys in a couple weeks. So final gravity is coming in just about 1020, uh, which is pretty much near where we expected it to be. So we're gonna go ahead and get this thing kegged up tonight. It actually tastes amazing already. So the fermentation went pretty well, all things considered. Um, I added my maple syrup at High Krausen, and we added the cacao nibs and the vanilla bean tincture at seven days. Uh, and then I added the coffee beans at about four days from packaging. It ended up being about four and a half days just because of how things uh, worked out timeline wise. Uh, it went into the keg a couple days ago, got force carbonated, and I am absolutely astonished as to how uh, this stout did not really need any time at all uh, to really smooth out. It is a very sweet stout. It is a very uh, thick dessert beer type of stout, uh, which means it doesn't really have acrid, harsh, roasty notes. Um, and also considering the fact that I added all those roasted malts at the end of the mash, kind of cut down on that as well. So the whole thing is really uh, a very easy drinking, smooth stout. Uh, which doesn't need all that much maturation time. So I figured at this point might as well go ahead taste it and get it ready So I'm gonna use the new draft tower and we're gonna pour this thing So the beer is called breakfast of champions and it comes in at technically 7.6% ABV, but that's not accounting for these 16 fluid ounces of maple syrup that I added during the fermentation. So that's really gonna end up being more about 8% ABV, and it comes in with 25 IBUs on top of that. The appearance of the beer is a really dark brown, pretty much black, uh, with a nice sort of creamy, sort of off-white head on it. It has good formation, good bubbles. The head retention is actually surprisingly good considering the amount of oils involved in coffee beans. I was a bit worried that would affect the head retention, but overall it looks pretty solid. Uh, despite not being a nitro or beer gas right now, it is uh, actually cascading quite nicely. So we'll go ahead and talk about aroma now. So on the aroma, I'm getting a really strong uh, amount of coffee, uh, really just the beans. It smells like you cracked open the bag. Um, I kind of get a little bit of a whiff of roast as well, uh, but I'm not sure if that's from the coffee or from the beer. Uh, a little bit of chocolate, kind of the cacao nib aroma. That's about it. So then we'll go in for mouthfeel. Mmm. That's a thick boy. <laughs> it's, uh, the mouthfeel on this one is very, uh, full-bodied. Um, that's kind of what I was going for. It has a full final gravity, a good amount of residual sweetness, and it is a thick mouthfeel. Um, it is about appropriate I would say it's appropriate for the style it definitely doesn't make this a very highly drinkable beer but it does have a good solid mouthfeel um, that bolsters all of those extra flavors and extra things that we added to the stout in the first place so once again it's not super heavily carbonated um, and it is not on nitro it is not on uh, beer gas so it doesn't have the full creaminess uh, that you would get with nitro but it's actually not that far off, to be honest. You really want to avoid overcarbonating something like this because then it'll get harsh. But really, just having enough carbonation in there to give it a good amount of head uh, is all you need. That keeps the malt flavors up front, nice and robust, um, and it keeps it from being acidic as well. So if you overcarbonate and you get that carbonic acid buildup in there, then that can take away from the luscious, smooth goodness of a stout like this. So now we'll go in for flavor. I mean, this thing is ridiculous. <laughs> this is dessert in a glass. Um, but it's a very, very good 
tasting beer for the first beer of 2022. This is a great success. Great success. The beer has so many layers in it, uh, and not all of them are from the additions of flavors that we put in there, and that's a good thing. So, uh, first and foremost, though, we have a very robust, aggressive coffee flavor. Um, like Speedway Stout coffee flavor. Um, it's got some solid roast to it. I'd say if the stout attenuated too much further, we'd really be looking at uh, having a little bit of an issue with a too bitter beer. But that background sweetness really does help boost the uh, the flavor here. After that, I'm just getting this straight up cookie flavor. Um, it's like a chocolate chip cookie. Like, I'm not even kidding. This is ridiculous. I think it's that toasted oat character in there that just literally makes this taste like a freaking brownie cookie. It's got like a Kit Kat bar kind of flavor as well. So I'm definitely getting the coffee. I'm definitely getting the chocolate. I'm definitely getting the toasted oats. Um, but I'm not really picking up too much maple. Um, and I'm getting a hint of vanilla. Yeah, I'm afraid the maple kind of fermented out. I'm really barely getting the maple in this. It's, it's very subtle. And I think what it does is just add some silkiness to the whole thing. And kind of in the same way with the vanilla, I can actually pick up on the vanilla, uh, in the back. It's, it's really very, very subtle. Um, and I like that. I think that's about where it should be with this. There is a small amount of roast in this kind of, it's more like a porter. It feels more like a, um, I guess you would say an imperial porter uh, than a stout, but uh, it does have a good amount of roasty quality to it. So beyond the flavors from the things that I added to this beer, I'm really getting mostly milk chocolate kind of character out of it. Uh, just that really smooth, sweet, nutty kind of chocolate uh, character, uh, along with a little tiny bit of roast, but just like, just an accent, you know, nothing too uh, aggressive and a good solid amount of sweetness to back the whole thing up. I mean, there is no doubting that this is probably a 300 calorie beer, um, but it is a delicious one at that. It is an absolutely decadent dessert in a glass. There is honestly very little I would change about this recipe. Um, and this is a very young stout. Uh, so I am interested to see how, how it changes over time, but uh, and the only thing that really comes to mind to really tweak on this would just be a lower the amount of coffee involved or just uh, lower the contact time, probably more likely. It is a little green. Um, there is a little bit of kind of a, a vegetal beaniness to it, I guess, um, which can happen if you leave the, the beans in there too long. But as a coffee lover myself, I don't really find that a huge flaw because it just tastes more like coffee and I like that. But if you're not huge into the kind of coffee characteristic bitterness, then that might not be for you. Uh, the other thing too is the maple isn't really there. Um, so I'd probably change when I put maple syrup in. I probably could experiment with adding a little bit to the keg uh, as it stands now and just see if that comes through later um, or I would just maybe go the fenugreek option as well but uh, this is uh all in all, still a fantastic beer, and it's a great way to start 2022. It is a fantastic winter beer to keep yourself warm with uh, during the cold months to follow. So I really hope you guys try this one out, brew it, let me know what you think. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something and found it useful. And if you did, please don't forget to hit that like button and hit that subscribe button for more content like this. If you want to support the channel, a variety of ways to do so, but please check out my t-shirt store where you can check out this t-shirt along with many others like it. And it's a great way to support the channel. Additionally, I also have a Patreon, which I've linked in the description box down below. My Patreon supporters are fantastic people. They are driving the production behind this channel. Through their support, I've been able to uh, really make big production upgrades to the channel in terms of lighting, sound equipment, cameras, stuff like that. That is all due to Patreon supporters. You guys make this channel better. Uh, also, I have an Amazon store in the description box as well, where you can check out some equipment that I recommend. It's uh, stuff that I have brewed with and used many times before. Um, and it kind of is something that I stand behind. If it's available on Amazon, it's on that store. So go check that out if you want to look at the equipment. Uh, I'm also on Instagram as The Apartment Brewer, where you can see slightly more frequent content updates, see what I'm uh, brewing in real time, see what's going to happen on the channel later on. And last but not least, if you are still here, you are the real champions. Thank you very much for being here. I appreciate it for watching all the way to the end. So until the next time, cheers.